this live fiber case. There's about uh, oh, maybe 10, 12 customers on here already. Uh, what we're doing is going to be using the spare fiber within this tray to bring in two new 96F cables. We're gonna be connecting a total of 72 fibers, which is six ribbons. Uh, four ribbons going down one street, the other two heading up another. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how to enter cables into a live case. Stay tuned. Now got our cables through the collar we have them cut to length which is five feet from the ring cut this is a 450 bs closure um, you only need five feet for these trays on a loose tube cable if it was ribbon cable you'd be using eight feet for your length six inches we want to make a ring cut you want to do it on both cables that you are open after making your ring cut ahead in a circular motion. Bend the cable until you snap all the metal sheathing in there. It's a perfect circle. Once it's all broke, give it 
good tug on it. Sometimes they're a little tight. Cable must have got wet at some point because that plastic coating is ripped right off and was stuck on the inside of that. But we got it. Go ahead and do the same thing with your other cable. Hopefully this one's a little bit easier. We'll go ahead and see. Got it all the way around. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's tough. Not bad. All right. Next little tip go ahead and make a nice little starting incision for the rip cord to start out if you just go ahead and pull on it a lot of times it'll get caught on that metal sheathing break right away causing more issues just a nice little tip do the same thing for the other side boom that's ready to pull and always try to do it pretty much where the cable's running where you're uh rip cord is running. They're going to run perfectly down the side the whole way. So you're going to want to keep that form as soon as you start pulling off of it. Try not to cut your rip cord either. Get yourself some gloves, some cut free gloves. Cable is needing to be grounded. You're going to want to pull at least inch, inch and a half past your ring cut so you can get your bond clamp in there. Now we have our rip cords pulled down to our ring cuts. Our ring cuts so off. There we go. We got them pulled down there. One thing that's nice to do is leave a little bit of rip cord just in case something happens. Fiber breaks, anything that happens to these cables. And you need to get back in there and strip more cable. Well, now you're not having to worry about doing a ring cut or anything. Obviously, it's highly unlikely we're going to be breaking any fibers, but a little, a little something just in case. I have had to do it before, and luckily, I left some rip cords, made it a lot faster. So we'll peel this sheathing off. Cut 
cuts. process is taking out the outer coating for this inner coating and let's go ahead and make a ring cut pop it around good opens up so this one like to pull off sometimes they won't pull off you'll have to come in here and do an upward slice to get that top layer off but there you go it exposes your ripcord these ones I mean you can put gloves on but they pull very easy so they don't really need gloves Unless you got some baby hands or something. Alright. Uh, always do a little ring cut down here. Another little tip or trick. Do a ring cut down here. Make sure your blade's not too deep and you cut into those tubes in there because yeah, you'll be restarting if you do something like that. A little loop around. about a centimeter away from where our original ring cut was. I like to leave a little bit of length there, just some extra protection from these sharp edges and whatnot. So once you got that done, go ahead and continue with your rip cords over here. And pull it right down to our ring cut mark. Pull. And with the other. Everything I'm doing, as you can see, is step by step. What I do to one cable, I do to the other one right away so that th that step is fully completed. Like we started with the ring cut at the front, both cables ring cut. Second step was taking the top layer off to expose the actual rip cords to get into the cable. Did it for both cables. Hold the rip cords, cut the rip cords. Organize the ring cuts at the front, pull the rip cords down, organize the ring cuts down here. It's just every step I do to one cable, I do to the other cable at the exact same time. This will help speed you up in your build. Because you're not doubling back, doing the same process on a cable. After it's already been done on another, just get it done at the same time. So, let's see if this will work for us. Today. Oh, oh. Didn't pull off his nice side, I'd like it to, but you get the point. Do the same with this one because of that ring cut. If you come here, once you get here, give a good. Uh, see, that one didn't want to go either. Oh, sometimes they don't go. It's okay. Boom. That's out of the way. Go ahead and get all this inner material out of your way. Always grab them all together. Give them a nice clean snip right at the ring cut. We're leaving a little loose ends there. Just pull them off right off. Comes off this one. Go ahead and get your hook blade out or if you want to use a seam ripper or whatever. It's up to personal preference. Go ahead and get in here without grabbing any of those tubes. Make sure you're only grabbing this little piece of string that's in here. Boom. Once you got all four of them cut, work them around. So you get a nice clean cut there. Thank you. 
put some peanut butter right out of your way. Sits up there. Now, look at this. You just work the way back. Slide it off the end. And you can see within this, there's a helix in the cable. Okay? There's gonna be one here, one there, and another up here. That's the flat spot in the cable. The cable will twist back and forth. Twisting this way around the strength member to the helix and it flips the other opposite way. In order to get this off the easiest, most efficient way, don't go to the end, come right to the first helix, grab with both hands and start twisting, but keeping it in the same order until you get there. Boom. Next helix. Okay, there's a twist the opposite way. Boom. Final one. like that. Do the same with the other. There you go. Now, on the inside here, you got one little string, moisture string. Go ahead and take those right out. Since this is a BS closure, we're really not going to have much room for, from the ring cut for our strength member. So we don't need to leave a whole lot on there because we're going to be cutting it down pretty short. So for instance, on this one, okay, I'll get it right about here for now. For the sharp edges that'll cut you to the bone to the bone a little bit of moisture tape in there i honestly like to separate a little bit away just to ensure a, ensure a great connection of this ground this end kind of back to how it originally was. We'll do the same with this one side. Get that moisture tape back. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely seen some moisture at some point. Pretty sticky in there. snug but not too tight if you crank the tape down on this there's a likelihood and I've ran into it on networks before that other people have built and you find a loss in the network and you think it's a splice loss you go resplice it go resplice it, it doesn't change the loss you end up finding the loss being down here someone has cranked this down way too tight with their tape causing it to force in on that inner tube here pinching these tubes on the inside of here. I've literally went in there and these were pinched right flat. Came in there with my little needle nose pliers, pinched the tube back open, boom, loss was gone. It was all because when Buddy put the ground on, his bomb clamp, he cranked it way down too tight, right in there, boom, flattened those tubes inside of the, under this little plastic coating. There's not much in there um, protecting those tubes. So you're just gonna get in here nice and snug. We're well, not cranking down on it. All you're really doing with this tape is getting a nice coating over this, ed this sharp edge here. 
so that if the cable ever bends or any tube ever gets bent here, it's not going to get cut. And it's also cleaning it up and securing the securing the bond clamp. But, all right. Well, that's how you strip 296 fiber cables right quick and uh, get them ready to be entered into a case. So uh, let's get to it. All right. So in order to fit these two cables into this FOSC, we're already pretty full. We have a ground taking up a whole port. So we're going to have to, we only have two ports here left after we remove this ground. We're going to have to insert this ground with one of these cables in order to fit everything in here and still be able to ground the inside here. So we have to do a little bit of wrecking out where get that open like so. Loosen this bad boy up. cables as well. So we'll take this right off. Like so put that off to the side. Get the bar trying to number holder out of this parts bag. cables. This is the feed side distributions all on this side. We're going to have to weave these in through here gently without bending any tubes or kinking any of them. So take your time and bend these back like so. This might even help a little bit. same with our other cable. And to be honest, I've never done the tip on the end like that before. Usually it's a bit of a struggle getting through there, so I guess that's the new tip of the day. Alright. to do the same thing again. Make sure we pop right through there. Don't mess up with any other cables. side of the tray because we are using the bottom tray it counts 433 to 504 the rest of this is for these drop lines and some dead count left on the original all right well unfortunately uh ran out of storage on here so missed the uh 
actual tightening down of the cables, but you guys get the idea. I just went ahead and entered them, ran the ground at the back, got it all sealed up now. So now we can go ahead and start working at entering these tubes to the tray. Stay tuned. All right, this is our location here. We got an existing 144 cable, 433 to 516. These are the two cables we're entering. 96F, 433 to 480, dead 49 to 96. We got a 96F, 481 to 504, dead 25 to 96. So within this cable, we're gonna be using blue tube, orange tube, green tube, brown tube. This cable, we're gonna use the first two tubes, blue and orange. So out of all these tubes, we're only gonna be using six. The, other, the rest of the tubes are all just gonna be dead and put within the basket here for the future if needed. All right, we'll go ahead and show you how I enter these into this case and get them all ready to be spliced. dead tubes. These are all the live ones we're going to be needing. Go ahead and take our dead store it down in the basket. trays but since these trays have nothing to hold them up go ahead and take that give it a nice bend you can fit it in the back here and that'll hold your tray up for you just like that so now a little tip little trick all right Let's see what we got here It's a Milwaukee. Don't be using none of them Sharpies. All right, Milwaukee. Wow, man. That was something we were told not to write on any tags with Sharpies. It can only be a Milwaukee marker. Like it makes a difference. But if you're gonna want to go ahead and come in here and make a mark, when I mark my tubes, I'm always marking them to the inside of the tray. You never mark them back here because whenever a a tray lifts there's gonna to have to be some slack that pulls forward and back and if they're cut the ring cuts too far back you can run into the tray and the tube popping out here and when it gets laid back down it pushes forward and actually snaps fibers so you want to ensure that you're marking them ahead so you don't ever run into that once you have some marks on there, go ahead and come back here. Get your ring cutter. Start ring cutting. Me personally, I only ever do one little ring cut, one circle. Never go more than that. It all depends on your blade height, though, and uh, your personal preference as well. But. My blade height set to one perfect circle around, and it's good enough. She'll pop. Alright, I 
and the last one. Alright, after the ring cut, go ahead and give the give a little wipe down of any of the dust or anything that was accumulated while we were stripping there and all that stuff, all that dirt. gel filled. Find out in a sec. Yep, yeah, they actually are. So, gel filled cable. Grab yourself a squeak clean. Squeak clean. Straight towel. And your alcohol. to get this done. You know what? Sorry for the bumpy footage for a sec. There we go. Just go ahead and keep that perfect pressure. You pull too hard, you can end up snapping the plastic right off the tubes. You go flying one way and the fiber goes flying the other way. Take your time. You can actually see an example of that in one of my other videos. Pulled way too hard and the tubes went flying. So it'll get nice and easy once they're towards the end. I still keep some of the plastic on them for a sec. Get your squeaky clean out. Come in with the first initial wipe. Finish pulling that actual plastic tubes off. Once you got that, get that out of the way. Grab a new slut side. Start getting some wipes in there. time you take cleaning your fiber the better your ribbonizing will be if you're splicing ribbons and just the neater your work will be when it comes to actually train all of this so if you leave them all greasy I'll tell you right now it's a nightmare when you go to ribbonize and the glue doesn't stick you don't realize it until after you're just splicing then you gotta re ribbonize. So, just spend the extra 30 seconds to a minute actually cleaning your fiber. I make sure I soak it with the alcohol after, too. Get any trash off of it. Alright, so, once that's happened, Usually come in, try to take some of the excess alcohol off so it can dry up quicker. And uh, when wiping these, do not be pinching super hard. 
because their fibers are overlapping each other, which is going to happen. If you pinch the yard, you're going to snap one of them. Down you now. Just light, firm grip. That's all you need. All right. Now we can just get to the ribbonizing. Ribbonize six, well, ribbonizing ball is six each side. And splice six ribbons, quick 72 fibers. That should power this whole street and a little bit up the other street. Stay tuned for the ribbonizing. All right. Start with our first two, blue. On the lead side. Check your color code. Once it's verified, come on over, put a little glue in there. Just enough to fill that little dish. Don't need any more than that. First few ribbons, I always do a few passes on just to get the glue going. So I found if uh, you don't do a few passes, a lot of the time it doesn't have enough glue on it, you go to splice it, it falls apart. So there's one.
just like that. It's the first six ribbons on the feed side. Now we can just go ahead and do the other side. Um, once that's done, you get right to splicing. Simple as that. Just uh, always make sure to measure fiber to chip before you start ribbonizing. If you don't measure, then you ribbonize all these. Then you go to splice them, get them all spliced. You go to put them away. And it does not fit in the tray. So just always measure first, then get the ribbonizing done that you can splice. All right, we're gonna end the video on there. Um, if you guys wanna watch how to splice ribbon fiber, I also have a video up on that already. You can go ahead and check through my playlist in the ribbon cable section. Um, I also have a full breakdown of ribbonizing as well. If you'd like to watch that, I'll leave a link to both those videos in the, in the description and at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell.